Hi, uh, welcome back to our, this is the third and uh, last, it should be about the third of the 50th uh, video on this uh, the Roth Therapy program. It's a program I really, really like. Um, he's assembled, you know, the way that he has assembled things in this has just been exceptional. I'm a Windows developer. And to tell you the truth, uh, the way that he has put these uh, items together, I communicated with him. Um, uh, I'm going to do more videos on this, and I'm going to release them to his site because he has just done a superb job. Comes out of Hungary. Um, the point is, is I pulled an image up right now, and there's several things I want to discover or, or discuss. Uh, one thing um, in here that I forgot to mention in the last one is down here you have a tone curve. And the tone curve is basically like all the rest of the curves. You have a contrast budget in a uh, in an image. That means you your contrast is spread evenly across. Or what you have is you have something like an S curve, where what you do is you slightly compress your highlight and uh, shadow um, uh, details, or I mean your uh, contrast and the highlight and the shadows, the tones and uh, allow the mid-range to uh, more pop out. Um, the point is, is this typical S-curve is found both in your cameras, uh, in, in the old 35 millimeter film or whatever. But what you do is you adjust this film, or I mean adjust this curve, and when you move it up in this direction, you brighten your highlights, and this red light means it's, it's processing right here. When it turns to green, we've, we've uh, I mean, lightened the shadows, and here what we can do is we can slightly darken the highlights if we wish or we can further um, um, you know lighten the shadows but um, it's a very very good program you click on this linear button it returns uh, to a straight line which this will take another second to process okay and it's back okay very important under this exposure if you work with a curve it gives you uh, a logarithmic and anti-logarithmic control. Please look at my uh, videos on color um, correction to learn more about curves. Uh, shadows and highlights is another area this program really excels in. Uh, this slider right here, without getting really technical, uh, controls the point at which a shadow is defined. Um, I mean, uh, the the shadow the shadow highlights right here. This slider controls where the shadows are defined. Um, like, um, and this controls the degree of, um, um, you know, brightness and, uh, or the degree of contrast in those shadows or in the highlights. Uh, one thing that's very important here is what they call local contrast. Local contrast, <coughs> what they mean by that is um, it's, uh, the local contrast, based on your radius, is confining to a portion of your mid-range. Um, they do it through um, um, various filters, but the point is, is if you increase your local contrast, let me see if I've got this turned on, I've got to enable it. Um, if you increase your local contrast, basically what it's going to do is make a lot of images pop out. If you've taken a, uh, taken a picture through a window and notice it's really flat, or your colors are really flat, it's usually because your local contrast is uh, low. The mid-range contrast is the most important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase that. And when this uh, light goes out, you're going to see a difference. Okay, if you'll notice, that image has popped out. And we'll do it one more time. You'll see it more, uh, more of the effects on the video on my site instead of YouTube because my videos are larger. That's www.fotolinq.com. But uh, this local contrast is very important because what it's going to do is going to make your midtones and so forth pop out. Uh, sharpening operates basically uh, as it does in any other program. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Um, the color boost and the color shift. Um, it's funny, every time somebody writes a program, sometimes they write it 
with the assumption that the end user knows what they're talking about. So when we talk here about A and B channels, what they're talking about is C-Lab channels. <coughs> the A channel is your green and magenta channel, and the blue and the B channel is your blue and yellow channel. Channel. So uh, basically, on your color boost, um, you can avoid the color clipping by checking this box, and enable the saturation limiter by checking this box, so your um, images don't look too Jetson-like. But uh, what you can do is you can increase. Uh, the color you can boost the color uh, slightly or you know even dramatically using this slider here under color boost um, on the color shift this is really a great tool on um, uh, correcting any color shifts in your image uh, you can correct the uh, C lab um, a or B channel uh, the a channel is the green magenta or the B is the blue yellow channel and um, it um, or the or the blue yellow C Lab channel, a uh, great tool. Um, the luminance curve um, basically um, you can control your uh, luminance, all the various luminous aspects, and then you've also got it in a curve format, which uh, I highly suggest that you go in and play with this. Um, Luminous noise reduction and color noise reduction are excellent. Um, what you can do is you can uh, uh, control both your radius and your edge tolerance. And uh, what that will do is uh, define uh, noise color or, or noise uh, reduction on the noise versus noise reduction on your detail. Uh, when you're all done correcting this image, uh, what you do is you can click on Save As. Um, you can define what you want to save it as. Um, TIFs are a lossless format and a great way to go back into GIMP. So I would recommend a TIF 8-bit. Interestingly enough, all the color processing that is occurring in this uh, RAW therapy is in 16-bit. And your camera RAW coming out of like my Nikon, um, there, it's coming out as 12-bit. The minute that you are out of this program and into GIMP, you're back into, until the next version, you're back into 8-bit uh, color processing. So I, I encourage you highly to do your color processing in this raw therapy, save it as an 8-bit TIF, and continue on in GIMP. But I highly, or I highly recommend this program. Uh, on the site, I'm going to go into a lot into color correction. I'm going to go a lot into um, all of this stuff that is in this program. So um, I uh, hope that you'll visit the site uh, www.fotolinq.com and uh, take a look at the videos. Uh, this is in uh, 800 by 600. All the videos are on that site and they're free. And I thank you for watching and please download this program. It is uh, on my site. I highly recommend it. It's a wonderful program to have with GIMP. Thanks and enjoy your GIMP experience and your photography.